To anyone who purchases one of these vehicles, please make sure that you have watched this video because it's part now of the history. We hope you enjoyed part one of this massive barn find extraction. If you haven't seen it already, there'll be a link in the description below. I do recommend watching that part first. What you're about to see now is day two. Um, just sit back, grab yourself a brew, enjoy. So here we are, day two. We're back in the leafy suburb. You saw in part one, the extraction of the three cars that were here. I showed you around in here today. The guys are going to get cracking. This has all got to go today, really. This is going to be very, very difficult, quite precariously balanced, quite valuable. And um, yeah, keep watching. So Guy, you were um, here early this morning. It's day two. Yes. Yesterday went okay. We talked about yeah, that yesterday. Yesterday went, went really, really well. We've now got today. So today's a whole new day, fresh day. We've got to try and get these two cars out initially so we can then access what's up top. Yeah. We've put the go-go -Go jacks under the front, one rear corner, can't get to the other corner and we're just going to see if we can get the car moving so we can try and squeeze it out this way. Now a bit of a challenge. Makes sense. Um, but we like a challenge, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah. Yesterday it was a case of getting as much as you can done. Yep. Today obviously there is a deadline. We have to get it done. Okay, Are you confident? So, absolutely. Yeah. Is there a plan B? Uh, revert to plan A. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the car's going to roll on the jacks. It's a case of now whether it's going to fit through a gap it shouldn't really fit through. Once this one's out, you've got a lot more room to work with. This is the key to today, today two. So Guy thinks he's cracked it. Once they get the go, -go jacks on all wheels, it'll be able to skate around lovely. Let's have a look here. So it's not just a simple case of moving a car. Let's have a look here. Super guy there is going to attempt to move this rather substantial engine. What have you just um, found, oh. Guy? It's a skeleton. Oh my word. Of a fox. <laughs> That's complete as well. Will that go in the automobilia section? Oh, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> so, I think there's a chance. That is um, quite revolting, but beautiful in its own way, isn't it? So with a bit of shuffling and the go jacks. The yellow jag is about as far out the way as it will get. So hopefully now, this one has a key. No, it's not going to start. Don't be daft. Um, but it does mean that it, it can steer a bit now. And it does roll. So the plan is, I think probably just to try and shuffle it. Domestic goddess Freddy there is doing his bit. It's just that when you're trying to move a car, um, they were trying to move it on the jack a little bit, just to move an inch or so earlier, and those cast wheels are a nightmare there, and you need a bit of gravel under there, or one screw head, and that's it. They lock up, so. Trying to get it as clear as possible around there. Hopefully just get that little swing round, straighten the car up. And then once it's straight, it'll be a case of pulling it out like the cars were pulled out yesterday. It's just getting it in position first. There we go, the other car's moving a little bit more. How these got in here in the first place, no one's quite worked out yet. It really is a feat of engineering. Because don't forget, if you didn't watch part one, which was yesterday, do watch that we'll link to that below but there were where these guys are working now there were three cars there 
and they, they were suspended. It was just amazing, incredible how they got there in the first place and how they stayed there for 40 years. Just beggar's belief how they were still there and getting them down, as you'll have seen in yesterday's video or the previous episode, as it is. Um, it was not easy to get those down. Today's, some of the challenges have been worked out, but it doesn't make it any easier. There's a lot of work. I'm worried for these guys that they'll run out of time. I'm just gonna have a look at the time now. So it's 25 past 10 now. And I've got half a car out, shall we say. It will be easier once this one's out, but then you've got all the stuff. Don't forget, you've got the E-type tubs up there, and then right at the back, I'm not gonna get in the way of these guys at the moment. There, you just see poking out. There's another AC. So they've gotta get that down and out as well, as well as this one. Load it up onto the car transporters, and out of here by it's five o'clock today, really. It's so close. I've got to make sure as well is that they don't cause any damage. I know to some people who aren't into cars or cars of this condition, that'll sound a really weird statement. But even with barn finds, you want to get them out and up for sale exactly as they were found. You don't want additional dents and scratches. People will notice that. You tell a 40 year old dent from a two day old dent instantly. So they'll do their utmost to make sure. There's bound to be the odd little bit we've rubbed up against it here and there. But pretty much this will come out exactly as it was when it was uncovered a few weeks ago when Colin Denton and Guy Snellin both saw these cars they'll look pretty much like they did when they appear for sale in August at Anglia Car Auctions. So here we go. This Jag, hopefully now, it's gonna see light for the first time in 40 years. It's fighting us a little bit. So the front wheels are gonna come up a bit. Okay, it's not gonna steer there. So it seems that the car wasn't rolling as they hoped. So an extra strap's going on. And then hopefully they'll be able to kind of lift and swing. We know we've got steering. So once they get it out, getting it up on the recovery truck shouldn't be the most difficult thing in the world, but it's got to come out first. That gap literally is an E-type's width, really. I've said it before and I'll say it again, though. Um, I keep chuckling to myself at the thought that we're pretty sure that one man, single-handedly, without machinery, got all these cars in there and up in the air himself. It's just an incredible feat. I would love to be able to travel back in time and witness that. So here she comes. Yeah. Hang on, that's right. What's that? 
Wow. She is out. I'm glad I get, I've had this opportunity to share all this with everyone. I'll, I'll be honest with you, this is, I've seen cars dragged out of all sorts of places, but nothing like this before. And so I'm seeing this for the first time at the same time you are, if that makes sense. Um, and I'm just amazed. I mean, in case you've just jumped to this point, let's go back here. And so far, four cars have come out of there. Am I, I'm right in thinking. Um, there was a car and a half parked there yesterday. A Series 1 Land Rover and a bit of another Jaguar. But all of that was in this. Still a lot to go and some challenges ahead, but that's helped things no end, because now the yellow one should be able to be positioned a lot simpler, a lot easier, because it's not jammed up against this one. This one's gonna get taken straight on a recovery truck, car transporter, whatever you wanna call them these days. And um, this will get taken straight to the auction house. That's a probably two and a half, three hour drive. I don't know from here for these guys. It took me th over three hours to get here. That one will get dropped off. I think that truck will probably be done for today then. Oh. Another two trucks and a trailer waiting as well for the other cars and tubs. Not sure if the bonnet for this one is here. There are just bonnets and bits of cars everywhere, so I assume it is. Actually, looks all right from the back, though. Let's try and zoom in there. These guys have done this once or twice, look. So, day two, vehicle one is about to leave. Let's say goodbye and we'll see you again. Quite a few of the neighbours were surprised that these even existed. Now that they've done one, attempt fate and say this one should be fairly straightforward. It's 
just something about seeing a vehicle, any vehicle, it doesn't have to be an E-Type Jag, but seeing a, a barn fine vehicle coming out of hibernation just gets you every time. I can't really explain it, you know it's there, you've already seen it, you know it's coming out but you still get a buzz when they pull it out for its hiding place and here we are, this one's almost out already fantastic A little bit of tweaking now just to get it on the right line out. Because you have got to come round obviously the side of the building straight down there so you need enough swing on it. This one looks dare I say it pretty solid. Not sure that the sills will pass an MOT. But it's complete, that's what people are looking for. I should have attempted fate. I said this one was going to be relatively simple. It's just literally a few inches out of line compared to the other one, I think. So there's a debate as to whether they'll need to manually bump it over. thing is with every wheel turning and the steering working this is a standard load really Here's my camera work here, I'm about to cross a road, I'm trying to look after myself as well. She's on, 
and soon she'll be gone. Just creating a little bit more space. And now the yellow peril is about to leave. About a three hour journey back to Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Guy, guy looking slightly relieved, but not there yet. What a beautiful sight. I dare say this will get papped all the way home. People with dash cams and passengers with cameras. Spotted on the M25. So if you can remember, there are two E-type tubs suspended in the air. The guys here have come up with a plan. They've got the forks in as far as they can go with underneath it, I think. And I'm hoping they'll just be able to lower it down, take the weight with the forks, free it. It's going to involve cutting a lot of wire and then hopefully it's lifting it down. I think there is a plan B, but hopefully we won't need to come to that one. If this works, it'll be great, because it certainly should work for the other one. Sun's gone in just to give us a better view. Bless you. It's all free now. Just in case of lowering it, see what falls off. Watching out for the Indiana Jones-esque booby traps. Guy is itching to see what other bits and pieces are stashed on top of there. Absolutely. Well, who wouldn't be? There's some gems in there, I'm sure. Look, she's down. There we are. Yeah, it doesn't look very well balanced. Well, there we are. We're here to prove that it doesn't always go exactly to plan. As long as it gets out, we'll be fine.
she's out. Simple little three point turn now, he says jokingly. Uh, nearly there. This will be the last one, I should think. There we are. That'll go straight on a trailer. One more of those to go, and then it's the AC Ace that everyone's dying to see. In theory, this one should be simple. <laughs> I've just cursed it. So of course, I said this would probably be the easiest, and I was right. I did curse it. This second tub it's, has been fighting all the way. It now appears to be free of the ceiling where it was tethered and I think quite a few bits were loaded into it. It's now coming down very, very slowly. Right, the second tub is about to see daylight. I haven't actually been in there and have a, had a look at this one properly. It was all getting a bit fraught inside. So I've kept out of the way. Well, I'm going to be intrigued to see what this sells for because that was a lot of work. But it was work that had to be done, whether it sells for much or not because you cannot get to that until that was out of the way but yeah that was getting those two tubs out was very tricky the AC up there is going to be equally as tricky but then when once that's done that's this workshop cleared out Think of the number of cars that were in there. I'll give you a quick look now before they go in there. I know sometimes lens perspective could come into play, so I'm just gonna, that's a one to one, one times, whatever you wanna call it, so you can get a true perspective. That's it, that's the workshop. With the likes of myself and most people out there we don't think about the space up there when it comes to storing cars but this gentleman did not something you see every day I think they've got a plan I hope they've got a plan The car is up on the girders there. They stretch the complete width of the building. And um, the car really needs to come off those. The girders get removed and then the car can be lowered. I think that's the plan at the moment. There are other ideas, but they're last resort. I think we hit a little bit of a snag here. Height's an issue. 
Oh, I think I know what's going to happen now. So this is like a manual ramp in a way. It's got clevis pins in there or bolts. I guess what they want to do is lift the car up, free it from these cross beams, and then get the pins out. They'll be able to lower the car to the ground. And then it will sit above it. The things are starting to move, they get the pins out. Dropping these cross beams a notch at a time. Oh, you got, how many have you gone down? Nice. Yeah. He's gone towards the door. I don't think anyone can get in the mind of the guy who put these up here. No. <laughs> Never. Yeah. One man put it up. Oh, what a legend. There half a dozen people trying to get it down. Never met the guy, never will, but I've got so much respect for him. Yeah. I love people like that. So the end is in sight. It is a case of clear this lot out, lower it down, I think at the very least, at least it'll be safer at a lower height. Hopefully, sat on its own tyres, it will lift it above the girders that were supporting it enough to get a forklift under there gently. The margins they're working in here are just so small. One little bit of took like that away could just. I mean it won't happen, so they'll get as much of it out as they can. Then I believe, I've seen Neil moving some wheels around. I think the plan is to lower the car onto some wheels. The wheels onto some wheels, as it were. And that'll give him plenty of height then to get those Massive girders out of there. It's one of those plans that has to be made on the fly, you know, it's... People will be sitting there now going, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that. Unless you're here doing something like that, you, it really is difficult. I suppose in the, you know, the cold light of day, you've got time to analyze it and have a look. But it's two o'clock now. These cars have got to be out of here. Working with the tools they've got to hand, which is quite a lot. They're doing a fantastic job. Not everything goes to a fixed plan and this isn't a situation most people will have ever come across in their lives. So you are thinking as you're going along, putting things into place, Working out what works, working out what doesn't work. And it's all knowledge that you'll take to the next job as well. Come on.
close. My arms are killing me. Holding this up in the air. Now the next part of the plan is to get those girders out. Time. Time. Your time. Well gone two o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I just tried to warn David there. He had to be gone at two. It is now ten past two. He's auctioning tonight. They're doing a house clearance in the morning. No rest for the blessed. Cars flowing. Yeah, now if the box section can come out, one less obstacle. They're not going to be light. Is everyone out of the way? So the car's been braced some wood under the tines there. Got box section coming out. Last bit of box. Now, my question just off camera to Neil there was, um, how are they going to turn it round? once it's down to get it out. And the reason I ask that is because the little go jacks or dollies, whatever you want to call them, they've gone back in another van because they were needed to offload. They've only got one set of them to hand. So that'll be the next little challenge. I'm sure they'll work that one out. This was the biggest part of it. The car's now clear of everything. I think that's the last wheel coming out, yeah. So technically that could come down now. This car hasn't touched the ground for 40 years. Here we go. Fanfare. Da -da! I'm going straight over to the car now. Wait until it's safe. And here we are. Could not wait. Lord knows what we'll find in there. Let's get out of the way because they want to get it moved now. So we are, I think, stuck in gear. So, it's pure manpower that's gonna get it shifted.
guy standing next to me, I don't know if you'll pick him up on my mic, but guy, obviously we're getting near the end now and you're thinking of getting these back and where the work begins again for you. But I'm just admiring here, I've got Colin in shot. He is a proper car guy, isn't he? Absolutely. Like, you, Absolutely. Sometimes when people on telly... Lives you, and breathes. Uh, yeah, yeah he would, he's cancelled appointments to be here. And has, from start to finish, he's been all over these cars. It's, it's quite funny. No, just come down, come down. Can you hold on? Hold on. We're gonna need to drop it down. Hold on. Whoa! Come down. It's tearing I haven't been talking because I just don't want to ruin the moment. This is the end of two long days. At least two YouTube episodes, I should think, by the time it's been edited. But um, I hope you've enjoyed following us al along this path here. It's been um, interesting to say the least. From the very first moment we got here, had to hit the ground running. I've done about what, 12 hours on the road for these two days. But it's been worth every minute of it. ready to be winched. I'm in the firing range there, I don't know if you caught that on the camera, but some pebble just flew back at me.
So I've had the pleasure these last couple of days of being in the company of Colin Denton from Classic Car Garage. Loads of you will recognise him, I'm sure. <laughs> um, now, the reason you're here is because you were the first point of contact, I believe, with the vendor. Absolutely. Yes, I was. And, and that came about because of Classic Car Garage and you're known did. to be the man to come to for this sort of thing. Um, and, but you've been here two days, mate. I, I heard you cancel appointments to be here. <laughs> now, I know you are an absolute car guy. There's no doubt about that. You're, it's, there's oil running through your <laughs> blood, mate. Um, but also, you know, why else? Why were you here for two whole days? Well, today and yesterday, I've been here to support the vendor. Um, she's been really, really cautious about how we approach this extraction of these vehicles. And when she first contacted me, it was really just about how do I get rid of one? Uh, but that conversation turned into, well, actually, I've got quite a few more. Um, but I don't actually want to be the person who, who, who actually tries to get rid of them. So. Uh, I feel safe working with you. If you could work with me, then we could possibly get these cars out together. Yeah. Uh, and hence the reason why uh, I'm, I'm here today. And uh, working with Anglia Auctions, it's something that I, I've done before. So we've got a bit of a relationship there. Yeah. Um, Guy's a great guy. And um, once I contacted him after being here, I mean, of course, the first time I came here, it was, wow. Um, in fact, I think there were, I found about 13 cars here. Um, but she said, actually, about 15. Uh, it was oh, my wow. second visit. I actually did find the, the, the two that uh, I, I'd missed, one being an E-Type uh, and one being a Triumph Herald. Um, but once I'd contacted Guy, Guy was in immediately. So within a, a week, he, he came down. We, we met down here and we spent the best part of the day just clearing out all the, all the, 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 the stuff that had gathered in the garage over possibly 20, 30, 40 years. Just to get access. Just to get to access. To begin the extraction. Yes. And you're going to hopefully come to the car auction in August? Absolutely, I'll be there. Brilliant. So any fans can pop along and say hello. <laughs> you're a very approachable guy. Thanks a lot. Yes. Have you got a message for the potential purchasers of these vehicles? Well, to anyone who purchases one of these vehicles, Please make sure that you have watched this video because it's part now of the history of that vehicle. And you'll also need deep pockets. So you'll be spending a bit, but you've got something that's completely unique, unique to you, and an historic vehicle that you can help to keep on the road for future use by others, even after you've got them. Fantastic words of advice. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. pleasure. Thank you. Guy, this is going to be very quick because we want to get home before the rush we hour, do. don't we? We're going to try and beat the traffic from where we are getting back to, well, you're going back to Suffolk. Let's say East I'm Anglia. Going, I'm going back to, uh, yeah, I'm going back to Norfolk. Yeah. Um, Elton, it's been great having you here. We must do in, this again. Yeah. <laughs> in the background, yeah. lurking with this camera and these eyes that just keep going, oh, wow, look <laughs> at that, look at this. So it's been, been a real pleasure. No, I hope um, you've enjoyed it. On behalf of everyone who's watching this video, I want to say thank you to yourself and to Anglia Car Auctions as a company. Uh, it has been a real honour. It's a privilege because you could have just kept us out of this. You didn't. And we hope we do you proud. And I hope that some of our subscribers come over to Anglia Car Auctions, subscribe yeah, to you guys. Yeah, subscribe on you, our YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah, because you're getting content going up all the time. It's well worth a look. So thanks again, mate. Have a safe trip back. I'll catch up with you soon. Thanks, Elton. Take care. So that's it. Finally, after two days, I think if you count the tubs as cars, that's 10 cars moved. These are all going to be taken back now to Anglia Car Auctions. We're going to go home, go through the footage and get this uploaded for you guys. And um, August, check the dates. I think it might be the 19th and 20th of August, 2023. Everything you've seen will be for auction. All the details will be on the Anglia Car Auctions website. Please subscribe, like, share, do all the things that help us out. And hopefully we'll do some more of these videos soon. Thanks a lot. Bye bye AC. See you soon.